At this time, I will call this meeting to order. Clerk, uh, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Commissioner Baker. Present. Commissioner Garrison. Commissioner Granados. Here. Commissioner Kowalski. Here. Commissioner Leon. Present. Commissioner Mirabella. Present. Commissioner Palmieri Mudet. Here. Vice Chair Hudak. Present. And Chair Williams. Here. Chair, you have eight commissioners present for this evening's agenda setting session. Thank you. Would you please now lead us in the prayer and salute to the flag? Humbly we ask God, the giver of peace and the lover of charity, to give the entire family of nations true agreement with his will and to grant the light of his spirit on all who work for justice and peace. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, would you please read the statement of compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act? The chair wishes to announce that pursuant to the requirements of the New Jersey Statutes Annotated Title 10, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting of the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Union has been given by mailing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2022 along with periodic changes necessitated by circumstance to the newspapers circulating within the County of Union who are designated to receive such notice and by posting the annual meeting schedule for the year 2022 in the administration building and further by filing the annual meeting schedule for the year 2022 with the office of the county clerk. Thank you so much. Um, we will approve the communications during tonight's regular meeting. Uh, so I will now um, call up for our business of the night. We'll begin with County Clerk Rajapi. Good evening, Commissioners. I have two resolutions for your consideration. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Kowalski. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, Madam Clerk, I, I see for number one, we have uh, additional expenses for primary and general and special election next year. I know it's expensive when you have extra elections during the year, and maybe you could explain a little bit more about what's that go what that's going to cover. Yes, certainly. Um, the special election, uh, there are two that we funded here uh, in the amount of about $110,000, which is reimbursable. The first special election is Westfield School Election. They moved their election from November to April for 2023. Uh, the second special election is one that we don't know about because often during the year, as we did this past year, we have a municipality who decides to have one. So we fund it. But as I said, that 110000 is reimbursable. The rest of the expenses are due to legislation that took place this year. So, for example, because of early voting, I have to uh, have for each district 30 emergency ballots, 30 provisional ballots, uh, um, 30 envelopes for each of those uh, for the primary and the general. You multiply 30 times 432, we're getting into the tens of thousands, you know. So, and that's the printing costs. Mm -hmm. So that's what that represents. And that's all due to recent legislation. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I see no other questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Now I'll call up uh, our county prosecutor, or is oh Jim Tanzi, uh, stepping in for Prosecutor Bill Daniel. Good evening, commissioners, uh, Chair. Um, before we start, I just wanted to say farewell to Commissioner Hudak, who uh, I think this is your last go around here and good luck in your new position um, we have a uh, we have five items on the agenda tonight um, I'll be happy to answer any questions anybody might have okay okay uh, Commissioner Leon good evening can you good. elaborate on the first one please? first one Yes, uh, Rosa Jamilio is uh, acting as our, um, our SANE nurse coordinator. Um, and her contract is running out. Uh, we didn't get the, the uh, we didn't get the, uh, 
was to, we, the disclosure documents were received too late. So two months or two weeks of her salary, instead of coming out of the grant, everything usually comes out of the grant, two weeks will come out of the, uh, will come out of our operating budget. <coughs> Okay. Uh, Commissioner Baker. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam, <clears throat> Madam Chair. Um, I was wondering if you could just uh, explain um, number five, here, the resolution number five, because I'm, oh. I'm not sure what the Union County Per Diem uh, Advocates Program is all about. Oh, this is the, this is the insurance fraud. Uh, unit in our office. It's funded uh, with a grant from the state and it funds um, uh, a part of the salary of one attorney, a sergeant, and an investigator. And that's an annual, that's an annual, so it's all grant funded. Um, that's an annual uh, grant that we get. Okay. And you say it has to do with insurance fraud? It's all insurance fraud. It's okay. the insurance fraud unit. <coughs> the, the people that Work it. Point, point of order, Chair? Yeah. If I may, um, on our printed agenda, number five is the contract for the independent contractor that you, were, that you mentioned for the number one. Oh, uh, geez. Not, right. not, not a problem. I know there was a little confusion uh, during, uh, earlier in the week, uh, yeah, but okay. the, uh, the number four on our printed agenda is the insurance fraud that you were just now describing. Okay. No, no, uh, are you asking about the inf insurance fraud grant? No, actually, what what number would that be, Mr. Clerk? Four. four? So the insurance, four. The no, insurance no, fraud is number four. Five. Number five pertains to the independent contractor, which uh, was discussed a moment ago. It was. Okay. Well, then, could you reiterate number five? Then explain. Is is what the that is? is Rosa Jamelia, who's our uh, uh, our sane nurse? So she is now, she's an independent contractor now. Yeah. She previously was was an employee she's now an independent contractor so we have to pay her through a, a, a resolution okay for the union county per diem advocates program right and, w and what is that because I, I don't know personally the, what that are, is. are you talking about the same nurse program <clears throat> no rosa yes sure that's no. a she's we have to send contract. out uh, a nurse anytime <clears throat> There oh. is a, a any okay. kind of a sexual assault uh, uh, for a number of different uh, okay. sensitive things. We send out a nurse I see. to for the victim at the hospital. Okay, I, I understand now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Certainly, and uh, Jim, if you would just uh, the uh, I think the one that um, Commissioner Leon was asking about was Operation Helping Hand. Oh, Operation yeah. Helping Hand. Yes. Now that's that's uh, our. I'm sorry. I, my my, uh, I should have accepted the agenda when I walked in. My agenda seems to be off. <laughs> um, Operation Helping Hand is a, is a program that we're involved in, where we uh, we partner with with uh, a company called Prevention Links, and we go out into the community and we try to um, persuade addicts um, to seek treatment. Um, we set up a, a tent. Um, <coughs> At times, we go out and make arrests and offer them treatment in lieu of uh, in lieu of prosecution. Um, it's it, it's a wonderful program. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a really helping hands is a wonderful program. We've been involved in it probably now about four or five years, so that's what that is. Okay, uh, I see no other questions. Thank you so Next much. Next time I'll have the right agenda. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah, we reprint them sometimes a few different times in the day. Yes. Okay, uh, now, uh, let's see, uh, Department of Administrative Services, uh, our county manager will be representing that department this evening. Thanks, Chair. On behalf of uh, Director Scatari and the Department of Admin Services, there are three items on tonight's agenda, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I see no questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair. Uh, next up, Department of Economic Development, Director Wagner, Deputy County Manager of Wagner. Good evening, Commissioners. The Department of Economic Development has six resolutions for your consideration, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Commissioner Granados. Thank you, Chair. Um, Deputy County Manager, can you elaborate on some of the programs we work together and some of the initiatives that are done through the UCEDC, please? Absolutely. There's two separate contracts. One of them is um, an economic development contract where they provide training, um, help <coughs> secure loans for Union County businesses. Um, I can tell you that right now they are managing 206, excuse me, 207 loans for Union County businesses in a total amount of $8.5 million. Um, they also uh, had 45 different training sessions that served 450 different individuals from Union County. And they also provided 900 mentoring hours for Union County businesses. They'll help them write a business plan and just um, give them benchmarks and guidance if they're struggling. So it's a wonderful resource for um, our local business owners. They do provide services all around the state, but these are the numbers I provided are specific to Union County businesses. The other contract is their procurement uh, contract. That's where they actually help businesses apply for and hopefully receive contracts with the federal government. In this case, um, there were 45,000 bids that were provided, so opportunities for companies to bid, and over um, $100 million in contracts were awarded over the last year. And that equates to either creating or retaining 2,700 jobs in Union County. So it's money well spent. And thank you for asking. No, definitely a great organization. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, okay. Deputy Manager. Certainly. Uh, Commissioner Kowalski. Yes, thank you. Um, Deputy County Manager, for number five, could you tell us a little bit more about the uh, Safe Streets and Roads for All grant program? And <coughs> do you know how much money we're getting from the state for this? And I, I've heard that, in general, traffic fatalities and, act and serious injuries are up, uh, not just in New Jersey, but around the country. So... Um, this seems like a, a good time to address this. <coughs> Absolutely. We actually applied for this grant already. It's a federal grant um, through USDOT. They came back to us and said, um, we really like your project, uh, but the city of Elizabeth is applying for something. Can you guys go together? So what this does is it amends the original agreement and adds their piece of the project on. I will tell you that we were left feeling like we're definitely going to get this money um, if we would combine them. If it didn't, it had to go to some review committee. So what this is going to do is take a holistic look at all of the roads countywide. And I will tell you, Rick has been very helpful in getting this thing pulled together, and Liza Betts as well, um, to look at the safety of all the roads, the congestion issues, um, particularly along the Route 28 corridor will be very closely looked at because that, that all ties together. Um, and we should, if we get what we asked for uh, between the two uh, parts of the project, about $1.1 million. Okay. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see no other questions. Thank you, Director Wagner. Next up, Department of Engineering, Public Works, and Facilities Management. And uh, in place of our director, we will have our engineer, Rick Matias, uh, representing that department. Good evening, Chair. Good evening. Uh, department of Engineering, Public Works, and Facilities Management has six resolutions on the agenda this evening. I'd be happy to try and answer any questions. I see no questions. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so. Oh. Vice Chair Huda. <laughs> uh, good evening, Rick. How are you? Good evening. Uh, could you just go over this, the uh, the scope of the change order yes. uh, for the um, amendment on number six? Absolutely. Uh, this is a bridge improvement project, East Hazelwood Avenue Bridge in Rawway. Mm -hmm. uh, the project specifically is a scour protection project. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with scour, it's essentially trying to prevent soil erosion um, from uh, eroding away the soil around the foundation of the bridge. So uh, during the work, uh, we encountered uh, unsuitable soils uh, in the area directly beneath the bridge where it, we couldn't directly drive piles into the soil to keep the water out. So that required a lot of uh, renegotiating some priorities by the contractor, uh, required some additional excavation um, disposal of that soil and transportation of that soil. Okay. And what's the, where are we in terms of the time frame of that Completed. project? Completed. So project we're is complete so and done. This is the final change order. This will be the final yes. change order. Okay, good to hear. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you. 
Next up, we have our Department of Human Services, Director Anderson. Good evening, Chair, members of the board. The Department of Human Services has nine resolutions on, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, Commissioner Palmieri Mudet. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Director. Um, on number eight, um, do we have any uh, numbers available on how many residents are being served um, through our emergency food distributions? Um, yes, we absolutely do. Um, with Within the year for 2022, we were able to do um, roughly 18 food drives, and um, this impacted about 58,000 um, individuals in Union County. Um, and there's a, you know, food insecurity is a big need, and because of the ARPA dollars, we're able to impact. But as you know, May 2020 is when we started our first distribution. So um, in November, it was our 93rd <laughs> distribution, and we impacted over 300,000 residents. And we know those numbers because when they do come, they do have to identify themselves, correct? They do. Um, when we, whether it's a drive through or walk up, we um, actually ask for a driver's license that we can take um, some of the demographic information we put in, in our database and we have that stored. So we do track it to make sure that the data is available for anyone who needs it. And plus, you know, it's a federal funding, ARPA's fu CARES and ARPA w are federal, so we have to be able to track um, who we're providing the foods for. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, could you explain a little bit in more detail um, the renewal subcontracts to the agencies for under number three, uh, the, the spending plan? The spending plan for the community service block grant? Yes. Um, okay, so the Community Service Brock Grant is a program that focuses on employment services, emergency services like case manager, shelter, food, rental assistance, family support, and we also provide linkage and information and referral to families. It is the same amount of dollars, 60625 and it's for about the individuals that are about 200% of the poverty guideline, so that's low, low, that's a family of four making about $52,000 annually. So the dollars go out into our nonprofit communities, people have to apply, um, and then we're able to work with our nonprofit partners to distribute where the need is most. Thank you so much. Okay, Commissioner Mirabella. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Director, I um, wanted to ask you a, a few thoughts about the Code Blue program that your department administers that this board has always supported for people that need shelter in the frigid nights and then I don't know how many we've had so far this year and although I see we all get notices when they it's enacted a, at least a couple um, so far right. so um, uh, Commissioner this year so far we've had about six calls but it's anytime the temperature goes below 32 degrees um, we provide shelter either it's either a warming center or a shelter um, that is hotel motel and or the gateway wise so and anyone is able to once it's a code, code blue is called as long as you're homeless and you need a place to get warm and sleep that's what is available and through this board we've been I thank you for the support because um, the homeless numbers that we're seeing and the trends if you looked at our point in time count last January Union County has moved up um, in the rankings so we have more homelessness in the county and you know there's some challenges right now that we're facing so this dollars really do make an impact because we're going back to the 90s numbers of homelessness so we're trying to figure out is it the transient people coming in from New York or um, or is it the migrants coming up from Texas what is impacting our numbers and how do we address and shift to support so I see the funding that's going to be in place for 2023 three hundred and fifty thousand dollars how does that compare with the budget that was prepared for this year we have kept it flat it's flat. the same yeah okay. thank you keep up the good work thank you okay uh, Commissioner Baker 
<clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Director, I just wanted to ask you in, in, in reference to um, the, um, the homeless services uh, that are being provided um, to the homeless families. And I'm, I'm, I'm particularly wondering, you know, how well are we doing with managing uh, larger, larger families, you know, four and, and, and above? Do we, uh, do we have space? Or is that is that <clears throat> is that still an issue? Because I know years ago, there that was an issue with you know uh, uh, finding space in the shelters for uh, families that had more than you know four, five, you know, large size families. Okay. I think um, when you look at the shelter base, it's a challenge to place large size families. That's why the contracts with the hotel motels make more sense for us because they're the availability for the double beds, et cetera, we're able to provide, or the efficiency. Um, so there's a kitchenette or something in there that we're yeah. able to do. Um, the w Because there's limited shelter available for family size, we have to do the best that we possibly can. Yeah. And a lot of times, there's the extended stays or others that are out of county that we're able to contract with to provide those resources for the families. Yes, I, I I know from my experience that <clears throat> that money for large families in the emergency shelters or hotel motel money goes pretty quickly when you do have a, a large family uh, or families to to that extent. But you are to be commended on 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 the tremendous effort that uh, has been made. Uh, and I'm a little disappointed that the homeless figures have gone up in the survey, but. Uh, the, there's some things we can't control, but we'll, we'll deal with it. But thank you very much. Thank you. It's a true team effort. So thank you. Okay. I see no other questions. Thank you, Director Anderson. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, we'll have uh, Andy Moran, Director of Public Safety. Good evening, Chair, members of the board. Department of Public Safety has two resolutions for your consideration. I'll try and answer any questions. I actually have a question on number one. Um, <clears throat> uh, in, in terms of this equipment, this excess equipment, um, what are we talking about? Uh, this is a government surplus program mm -hmm. uh, run by the military. Right. We have, mm -hmm. uh, we've been participating the last few years. Sure. Uh, and we really have benefited in acquiring a wide variety of equipment from, you know, vehicles, a tow truck, generators, computers, um, computer servers, electronic equipment, um, generators, uh, light towers, um, just a wide variety. So of all, all non-lethal stuff. Correct. We don't, we don't um, bid on any uh you know, weapons of any kind or tactical uh, vehicles. Okay. So, but uh, they do have a wide variety of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, equipment. Uh, the large tents that we had at the COVID testing site, okay. the heaters and the generators that supplied heat to our uh, staff while they were testing people outdoors was all supplied through this program. Great. I see no other questions, so thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> I, you know, I'm looking. I'm looking at Commissioner Baker, and I'm. I think I'm in denial about uh, <laughs> Vice Chair Hudak. Go ahead. Th thank you, Chair. Um, good evening, Director. Just good evening. In, in regard to number two, um, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory um, in terms of you know what the cost and the training. Uh, the question I had was more regarding to the date. It's 2019 funding, so. Is it typical that the UASI grants, um, you know, relate back two or three years on funding, or is this just a byproduct of the pandemic, where you know funding's in place and you know programs were delayed, and did we have to get any? And I guess my mm -hmm. second part of that is, did we have to get any permissions for any of these grants to extend funding? Uh, usually the UASI grants are a three-year grant period. Okay. Um, and, you know, under certain circumstances, we could apply for extra funding. Um, some projects, um, at the end of the day, cost less to administer than we had budgeted. 
So this is actually a new program for law enforcement officers mm -hmm. to be trained in tactical entry, which we haven't done before for a UOC project. So uh, this funding you know, became available because uh, other projects came in under budget. Gotcha. Has there been any are there any challenges in terms of drawing down funds? You know, during the pandemic years in general, or everything just seems to be back on schedule in terms uh, of your procurement for those grants. No, we we still have. Uh, you know, we suspended all you know mass training exercises during the pandemic. Um, active shooter training, bleeding control classes that are uh, traditionally held in a classroom setting, which. You know for two years we weren't able to do so um you know we were working very diligently and actively uh to supply that training before the grant funding runs out yeah unfortunately it's just a very relevant training um you know most of what the uoc program provides so good to, good to hear that we're getting caught up and getting those trainings back on track thank you chair certainly okay i see no other questions thank you director thank you chair uh next up Office of County Council, Council Bergen. Thank you, Chair. Uh, to you and the board members, County Council has one resolution tonight, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Okay, I see no questions. Thank you. Thank you. And now we come to Office of County Manager, uh, County Manager Ed Oatman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the County Manager's Office has two items on tonight's agenda, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Mirabella. Yeah, just a, just a quick comment. Um, County Manager, I'm happy uh, to see this Clark Reservoir item on here. And through the efforts of the Senate President in your office, we're able to secure this grant with the support of the commissioners. And I think it's a good step in the right direction to make that a productive uh, park space for our residents in the county. So thanks for what you're doing to move this along. Thank you, Commissioner. And we are working with um, the state and also the environmentalists to try to, to make sure everybody's on the same page about how we're going to clean it up there. So right. it's been a good yep. collaboration so far. Yep. Good luck with that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, all right. Um, all commissioner sponsored laudatory and condolence, condolence resolutions are from the entire board. And uh, I just would ask, are there any comments from the board on any of these commissioner sponsored resolutions? <coughs> Well, um, yes, Chair? Commissioner Baker. Um, the one I sponsored for uh, the Grover Cleveland and, and endorsed by the entire board <coughs> regarding the safety patrol program. This is just a. Uh, <laughs> I have to take you back way back when, <coughs> but in the first grade, I was a safety patrolman. <laughs> and I <laughs> worked my way up to uh, up to the fifth grade where I uh, received the rank of lieutenant. And um, and I, when I saw this in one of the local papers, I could not help but think about those days and that the the, the importance of public safety, you know, um, at this point in time, and to think that this that the program is still in the. Ex Mm -hmm. still in existence and that uh, it is, it's moving along quite well and so I want to congratulate uh, and commend uh, Grover Cleveland and any other the uh, elementary schools that are participating in this program uh, for public safety uh, you have an avid supporter here <laughs> thank you okay. nice and I, I just want to say um, if you look at number eight and number nine um, this, our, our city of Plainfield, where I'm from, my hometown, uh, suffered two tremendous losses of uh, two employees uh, within a week of each other, uh, one of whom was a personal friend of mine, but I just do want to thank my colleagues for their thoughtfulness and um, for passing, uh, well, for allowing us to put these resolutions on. Um, the city is in mourning, and we just thank you all for your support. Uh, so with that, um, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved, Madam Chair. Second. Uh, moved by Commissioner Baker, seconded by Commissioner Palmieri, moved dead. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 This meeting is now adjourned, and I will ask the clerk how much time